So we create a QFX, we download Amazon orders, we've opened Excel, we filtered it, we manipulated it, we opened up our data converter, we created a QFX file, and we upload it into the clearing account. Now we're going to offset the clearing account by putting all of those charges from the credit card, which is probably where Amazon is charging, into that same clearing account. So let's go into the product and watch that process. Now I've already actually done it here in, 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 in this one for, for demonstration purposes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to our original Visa, right? So this is the original Visa card. And what I did is I simply filtered it based on Amazon, right? And I went to Amazon and I did the date range that I wanted because I'm only doing since December 1st. And I highlighted all the Amazons that I wanted to see. And then I hit edit and I'm mapping them all to the Amazon clearing account, right? The second one. Okay, so here we are. I now have debits and credits, AKA payments and deposits in this clearing account. Now, what is a clearing account? A clearing account is typically a balance sheet, asset or liability account that should always reconcile to zero. So that means we're transferring funds in and then we're expensing it out. So what we're doing is we're using this account as something very easy to upload to and we're using magic of repurposing the actual charges to this account to offset it. So now we have to go through and do a reconciliation. Now notice the very first line item is $20.23. Now that took place on November 27th, that's when it shipped, but the very first charge that I brought in was December 1st. So that actually shouldn't be there and that's why I left it there so we would have something to delete. Because remember, here we are at 63.62. We wanna get that to zero so that we know that our debits equal credits, payments equal deposits, charges equal transfers. Now, ironically, that went in the wrong direction. So let's keep going here. The next line item is the Amazon Smart Plug. This is for 25.32, but the credit card was charged for $5.32. When we look back at our original data, it in fact was 25.32 in the item total. However, that was purchased on a promotion. So this is really, the charge is $5.32. So even though we imported 25.32, it also needs to be $5.32. Now we have an example of charge and expense. And of course, we're coming back to zero charge, expense, coming back to zero. So now let's start to continue down and see what else we can see. Right off the bat, Amazon Kindle. So Amazon Kindle is actually not included in that list as are a bunch of other things. So that would mean we'd come back to the original Visa and we would just essentially expense it then and there. And I know that there's another one later on. So I would say, let's just expense it to books and supplies because we don't want that in our clearing account because our orders that we downloaded were only orders purchased through Amazon. Let's talk about the next odd transaction, $63.96. This was a card, December 4th. Uh, it was charged to the card. However, it wasn't in the list that we imported. There's no charge here for $63.96. The reason was, is this was an order that was placed in November. And even though it didn't ship till December 4th and charged till December 4th, when I filtered my list, the original list, it was above the line that I took. So you wanna be careful of where your beginning, your beginning uh, activity is, uh, which is uh, a challenge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna delete it because if I delete the transaction, it's gonna mess up the original credit card. I'm just simply gonna come back and code it here as something that doesn't impact me over in, or in the clearing account. 
So now I see I'm, I'm coming back to zero. I'm coming back to zero. And notice how even with all this activity, I came back to zero. And again, that was part of the reason why I wanted to you put the reference number in there. See this, 13, 3251, 3251, 3251, all of those equal to 185.44. See, 2345, 2345, 2299, 2299, and we're back to zero. So another way to do this is just using the reconciliation method. So in the reconciliation, you'll see all seven of these charges with the shipping tracking number ending in 3251, 185.44 was charged 185.44. So as we go down, we start to select. You always want to come back to zero, 22, 22, 23, 23. Okay, we'll keep going down looking for easy ones to reconcile. So 2399 and 2399 and back to zero. Now you'll notice 9328 is over here, and then we have a diff, we don't have 9328 over here. So if we recall uh, back at our original, I noticed there was a place where there was a gift card. And sure enough, 9328, there was a gift card used on that order. And the amount of the gift card was $21 and 74 cents. So now maybe I can, maybe it's not a gift given, maybe it was a gift card, gift received. Okay, make sure this is negative. Just 7154, 7154, and now when I return, I will be able to do 7154 and 7154. 57, back to zero. So here's another tricky one 8971, 8971. That is actually this charge right here at $51.26. So why is it off by 1314? Well, as it turns out, this order of baby songs, songs, and sing-along songs was a gift, and it included gift wrap. The gift wrap charge from viewing the Amazon account was $11.97 plus tax, and since this was sent to California, it comes out to $13.98. So that is another limitation of the download that we received from Amazon. And there are others. Okay, once fixed, I'm going down. This was one order for $94.29. 9429. That's the nice, that's what, when it happens like that, it's nice and clean. You really got to want to find all the missing transactions. Sometimes it's just not material for people. Here's another one. Here's an order for three products. Charges were 912, 1047, and 4499. Was only charged 6268. The difference, $1.90. A coupon. So it looks like coupons are also not ported over via that order report. Okay, through the magic of editing, we have turned a lengthy process into hopefully a short one by getting us to zero. The last one was a promotion, which is again is another thing that does not come in our December 25th purchase of TurboTax was a promotion of 95 cents. So when we imported from the download, it was off from what was actually charged. But we are now at a zero. We have 
charges of $1,225.97 and deposits of $1,225.97. If you recall, when we accepted all the transactions in, that's when we coded them so that when we look at our P&L, we will now have greater detail into what we spent at Amazon. So that is the process of getting Amazon charges up into Quicken using a QFX upload. Then we reconciled the clearing account to zero. That gives us the warm and fuzzy feeling that everything is accurate. Remember all of the little issues that we encountered along the way. And it may not be material to actually reconcile it to zero. I mean, this is already a leap above just coding everything to the same exact category. But gift certificate amounts were not in the report. Promotions were not in that report. Return credits, which we didn't have an issue with. Prime Video, that's not in the report. Prime Video, gro Prime Now Groceries, if that's available in your area. Prime Now Tips, Amazon Go, Amazon Free Time, Amazon Pay, and Amazon Kindle. In parentheses here, I have what that would actually look like. Uh, Prime Now, Prime Now Tips, Amazon Go, Amazon Free Time, Amazon Pay, which is a new feature that I just saw recently, and Amazon Kindle. Uh, this probably doesn't include a whole bunch of other subscriptions and services that Amazon provides. And if you come across them, do please leave them in the comments below so we can kind of figure out what everything is. Finally, we have the Amazon charges shipped, not ordered. Remember that tip, that it's shipped, not ordered. And when you're doing your reconciliation, your import, you want to make sure you're really good with the dates and that you line up the first date and the last date to your charges. Otherwise, you're going to always be off a little bit. Given the amount of steps involved in this and all of the little tweaks along the way that you need to make, uh, I only do this quarterly, if not annually. And that way I can see, okay, a little bit of transparency into my spending. But if it's not worth it, uh, I also understand that too. All right, that concludes this video, importing Amazon charges to Quicken. Again, my name is Stephen M. Smith. I am the owner of Controllership Solutions LLC, as well as Sundial Virtual Family Office. Thank you very much.